ladies, gents, and non-binary friends. This is the New Leaf Podcast, and I'm Carmen, your host. And this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Welcome to episode 81. Um, before I forget, the Scrap Along is still running. It started on February 14th, and it is running until April 1st. And it is uh, basically a make-along, no matter if it's you know knitting or crochet, um, that will hopefully motivate you to um, use up your scraps and uh, so you can start fresh with um i don't know some new yarn purchases perhaps <laughs> and if you want to join in the fun and uh, maybe win some prizes then you can join my Facebook group, New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. And before we get into what I have been making the last week, I wanted to talk a little bit about designing for disabled people. And this has been brought on by a couple of things. On uh, Facebook, I saw a video shared by BBC Sesh, and it was um, a video of Emily Nicole, and what's her... Emily, Emily Nicole Roberts and I just after this video I just I love her already um, she has a video about SDIS sitting down in style and she also has an Instagram and um, YouTube account where she talks about um, being fashionable while also being in a wheelchair and she had some amazing tips like um, that uh, the sleeve should not be too baggy and that um, you know if she's wearing a top that she'd rather have it cropped um, and um, I just I just started thinking like okay we should be talking about this more in the knitting crocheting and also sewing community so I saw her video I'll continue talking about it in a bit and then I also uh, watched some videos by Nina on Instagram uh, Nina's pronouns are they and she um, so I might you know <laughs> use one more than the other um, so they are a, a disabled activist and she has a lot of videos about um, you know, your mindset around disabled people to not look at them with pity, but, you know, uh, look at them as if um, a wheelchair is the same as a pair of glasses. If, if you need glasses, you know, you don't pity people who wear glasses, right? So, um, yeah, just um, watching those videos, I think, I watched them in two days, they came up and I was like, okay. And some stuff came up that uh, I have seen or read uh, in the past year. Um, I came across a sewing blog with tips on modifying patterns uh, for wheelchair users. Um, and you know, <laughs> I'm not that great with sewing. But uh, I was thinking for knitting, you know, um, I've been hearing a lot that wheelchair users like their sweaters to be cropped in the front but longer in the back. So I thought that would be super easy to do right with short rows. Um, so what I want to say <laughs> is that I thought it would be great to create a sort of resource um, where knitting and crochet designers and sewing designers, because it's basically, you know, the same concept um, perhaps I'll make a blog post and they can visit that and then see okay these things I need to uh, take into account um, and I'm not going to go too much into it now because I've just <laughs> I've just breached the surface of this you know uh, um, Oh, I don't know if I just mentioned it, but that sleeve shouldn't be too baggy and that, you know, sh you should have full shoulder movement because you're going to want to use those uh, wheels. So, uh, like, poncho sleeves are not too, too great, you know. And, um, oh yeah, and that the neckline should not be too low because if you're sitting down people are going to be higher than you and they're going to look right into your cleavage. Um, and I think, I think Helda, um, Helda Panagari on Instagram also mentioned this in one of her posts. And, um, yeah, I just, um, you know, 
If you know someone that I can ask specifically about this, or if you've come across a post or whatever, I, I just like to do some more research so that I can set up this kind of resource, or maybe there already is a great resource and I can just point to that, um, you know, give them a bigger platform. Um, yeah, so if you have any suggestions or ideas please just email me at hello at newleafdesigns.nl and yeah i'd love to chat about this more because i think i think it's super important and i think it's super easy to actually do something about it i mean it would already make a huge difference if um if people would model their clothes sitting down right so um so people can see, oh, okay, this, this sweater is going to be, I don't know, <laughs> if it's oversized, then it usually doesn't look too great while sitting down. Obviously, it also has to do with torso height, but I'm just saying it could be super simple, right? So why not do something about it? Uh, why not provide the information that we need? Okay, and I also wanted to talk briefly about uh, Black History Month now coming to an end. Uh, February is Black History Month. Um, but even though February is almost over, I want to ask you to not let Black History end for you. Um, to keep reading about it, uh, to keep surrounding yourself with Black creators, Black artists, Black uh, bloggers, business owners. Um, and just when we surround ourselves with black people, we are bound to learn more about their culture, uh, more about their history, even though it's not their job to teach us. I'm not, I'm not telling that. Um, but we are bound to learn more stuff just by immersing ourselves. Um, and so we can have less white people moments. I had a white people moment this week. Um, I ordered some um, really lovely earrings. Um, some gemstone earrings from Peri Condre. Um, this is their card. Peri means pearl and Condre means land or country. And these are the uh, Tongo words. Um, and I believe that is, that means Shanan Tongo, Surinamese. Um, you know, even that I'm not sure about that shows how much, how little I know about Suriname culture. Um, and I should know more about it because I'm Dutch, but, um, <laughs> so this is their card. Um, it says, thank you for your purchase. Enjoy this handmade piece, Lobi. And um, I thought Lobi was their name uh, because it was signed on the bottom. And um, so I went to their uh, Instagram, which is also Perigona, and I uh, DM'd them, um, thank you so much, uh, thank you Lobi. And uh, then he responded with Lobi and a heart. And I was like, that's weird to uh, respond with your own name. <laughs> And I was like, oh, duh, it's probably not their name. It's probably a greeting. So I looked it up and it is the um, Surinamese word for love. And I was like, you know, facepalm, but like white people facepalm. Because it, it would have been so easy for me to know this. I bet if I <laughs> would have learned a little bit about Surinamese culture that I would have known that Lobi was love. Um, and just tying into that, um, I was watching an IGTV with uh, Glennon Doyle, who is the author of Untamed and wildly popular, and I have her book too. I'm just about to finish it, and I agree, it is mind-blowing. Um, 
and she had invited Dr. Uh, Yaba Blay onto her um, IG Live, which then became an IGTV. And Dr. Yaba Blay is the author of One Drop, um, which is a book she published, um, I think, 10 years ago. It's about um, black identity, um, who gets to determine what is black. Um, she's written it mostly for black people. Um, because black people not, black people often feel like they are either too black or not black enough. Um, and she's just, um, you know, I haven't read it yet because it is sold out everywhere. Um, so this book is published 10 years ago, um, but is still super relevant and urgent to read. Um, yeah, so I'm on the wait list. I hope to be reading that soon. Um, because just, just, you know, by reading more, we can um, avoid embarrassing white people moments, right? <sighs> yes, so um, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm not perfect, but I am working towards being more anti-racist. And I believe that showing up even imperfectly um, might be helpful. Yeah, so I just wanted to, uh, ask you to, to surround yourself with more black creators, um, black businesses, um, and, <laughs> and the number one thing, um, that I get as a response if I share black owned businesses or, uh, if I share something and then mention that they are black, uh, the number one thing that I get as a response is like, oh, why does it matter? Um, if, um, isn't, isn't anti-racism about, uh, being equal and then why should we even point out that they are black? Uh, but the world as it is now is unbalanced. So if we just go about our regular business and, um, and not actively search for black owned businesses or black routers, black creators, then um, the world will only show as white. So yes, the world is unbalanced right now and we have to actively look for black creators, artists, bloggers, um, business owners. And um, yeah, <laughs> so that's what I always say to those people. My bangs really are not behaving. <laughs> I want to transition from having bangs to not having bangs. So that means not, not cutting them. And um, I'm having some trouble with them. Um, anyway, so I don't want to be like, um, now that we have that out of the way, but um, <laughs> I do want to talk about some knitting. What about you? So um, I have been knitting a lot the past week. Um, past the last um, Friday, uh, my boyfriend asked, um, do you want to go to the sea? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Um, uh, because he had to do some work there and um, I could sit in the car and knit and it's about a two hour drive to the sea and I'm two hours back so to me that is four plus hours of knitting um, yeah so that was a really really great um, and we got to walk on the beach and search uh, search for um, shark teeth so that was fun too um, and I took about five projects with me that day, uh, of which two were secret, no, three, three were secret and two weren't. And one of the um, whips that I can show you are my scrappy socks. And I don't remember if, if I had finished this sock already last week. I think I might have. So here's the first sock again. And I did weave in, or I just wove in the um, ribbing ends, and then the other ends, I'll be I'll be able to just cut off because I have already wrapped them in 
with my wrapping in ends method. And that is Patreon exclusive for now, at least the tutorial video. Um, but it will be coming to my YouTube channel uh, in a couple months. And um, in the PDF pattern for Scrappy Socks, I've also included a photo tutorial. Um, so if you're an experienced knitter, you might be able to um, to learn it from the photo tutorial as well. Um, yeah, and this is the uh, start of the second sock, and it just it seems like I haven't been completely random with my colors. Um, these kind of seem to flow into into each other, and I'm not sure. Like, okay, there is a clean break here, uh, but um, yeah. <laughs> It just seems to be kind of gradient, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, so I might be um, choosing colors a little bit more deliberately from now on, just to kind of have more breaks. So it's more like stripes instead of flow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these are my scrappy socks. I am knitting them as a gift, and I'm using up oddments, oddments from my stash. And yeah, they're just really, really fun to make. I think they are my fourth scrappy pair, but I've only kept one of them. Yeah, and also for this one, I'll be able to snip off all of the ends without sewing them in, except for the one at the beginning and the one at the ribbing. So, and I wanted to point out that um, I tried some single ply sock yarn in here. I do have a little bit left. So this is uh, Long Yarns, I think, and it is, you know, it has a kind of handspun effect because there are multiple colors in there. Actually, it is, um, I've also wound up some minis for the um, prize packages. So it's sparkly, so that's why I bought it. And they say it is for socks, but it is single ply. And for a while I thought that perhaps did not matter. But then I got a question from someone who had knit a sock and it was twisting. And I noticed that the yarn she used was single ply. Just imagine that, um, you know, she had knit the entire sock with single ply. And just imagine that the toe is here and then the heel was like here. So it had twisted. Um, I, I don't know if you can see this, the sparkles are kind of obscuring it, but, um, like, there is a diagonal line in there, so, yeah, even for that that small of a piece, it is twisting. So I just uh, thought that was really interesting. So I will not be using <laughs> that yarn for socks anymore, except to use up this little scrap. Yeah, and um, the rest is all plied. It's mostly sock yarn that you can also put in the dryer. And um, just if you're knitting socks for others or if you're knitting anything for other people, um, I think that is safest. Um, I don't think I have told you yet, but um, one of the hats that I was knitting for uh, Christmas gifts, uh, one of them has already been felted, I think, a week after I gifted them. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was January 2nd. And... Um, and I got a photo that one of the hats was felted. It was a Star Wars hat. So that was very sad. <sighs> yeah, I, I've, um, I've given her one of my other hats that I had um, 
knit years ago and wasn't wearing. Um, and that's knit out of acrylic, so hopefully a little bit safer. Yeah, but um, that made me realize again, like, oh, uh, non-knitters are not as precious with their knitwear. So... <laughs> gotta keep that in mind. So yes, my scrappy socks, I have some, oh, I'm actually able to see on the progress board whether I finished this last week or not. Um, and yes, I was already halfway, so now I am almost at the halfway point of this sock. So let's say I'm almost at 75%. Ta-da! And for my second project, which is the beret that I made for my mom, I have now finished that. Um, I finished knitting it on Friday and then it went on the blogger. Um, I made a plate. She came by yesterday, so I gave it to her. So because I was anticipating that she would pick it up before I would be filming this podcast episode, I recorded a little clip, so I'll just put that in right here. Hi everyone! I am recording this little bit of the podcast in advance because I have finished the beret and um, I expect my mom to be picking it up later today. So um, I won't have it for when I'm actually podcasting. So <laughs> the beret is finished. I finished it Friday evening. Um, so one day after the last podcast episode and I put it on a plate. So how you block berets is you first wash them and uh, as I explained in the last episode I scrub them quite vigorously with soap uh, so that I get uh, more of a halo um, and that hopefully the increase uh, stripes aren't as visible. Um, but you know blocking them makes them already makes them less visible um, because you know you, you'll have to compare it with um, the previous podcast episode because then you could really see these ridges so you put it on a plate um, usually uh, usually I use a bigger plate uh, I think 28 centimeters something like that I have a fruit platter that is that size um, and for this one, I just use a dinner plate because my mom has a smaller head. So, uh, and then I, this is not mentioned in the pattern, but I thread a piece of leftover yarn through the bind off so that it, um, you know, it's just a nice edge because once you've put it on the plate, it might get a little wavy. So, um, and it has been drying now for two days. It takes a bit longer to block than other um, projects because, you know, it's on a plate of porcelain. It's just not very um, easy to dry. So I'm just going to snip this and I'm going to take that out. And it stays nice, nicely put. And now I'm going to take it off the plate. Look at that. That looks really nice. Um, now I don't know if I can try it on very bl briefly. Because um, I have a slightly bigger hat than my mom. I think I can risk it by putting it on briefly. Oh, but just, do you see how much difference this makes? It, uh, blocking a beret is like, you know, blocking already has a huge impact on your uh, finished item, whether it's crochet or knitting, whether it's a sweater, uh, even socks. But um, I find the um, most, the most difference? <laughs> I find uh, I find blogging to be really satisfying on lace projects because then you know it really opens the lace and it stays put and on berets so um, because you get 
the actual beret shape and then you can put it on <laughs> I'm not going to force it and then you kind of take the tail and put it to the back see it's it's quite tiny on me the um, ridge so um, but I think it will look great on my mom I'm so happy with it. So um, the yarn I used was a fingering weight and a mohair from Atelier Het Wolbeest um, from a Dutch indie dyer and um, you only need a little bit of yarn. I still have most of the yarn left over. Um, yeah, and I'll be giving that back to my mom as well. And yeah, the, the weather is actually <laughs> really really sunny so I hope she'll still have some um, opportunities to wear it this winter but um yeah and the pattern is of course Bees Bees Beret by Sari Nordland yeah I'm a huge fan of this pattern it takes about two days to finish a beret and then the blocking is so much fun and then you know <laughs> it just a beret looks surprisingly good on people so really give it a try if you have some mohair and a matching shade of fingering weight go for it okay back to the regular podcast episode now so yes, that was a, another beret. It was my third beret that I knit from that pattern. I'll just mark that as done. Yeah, so my mom came by yesterday and um, she really loved the beret. It looked really, really cute on her and uh, it fit perfectly. Even though it was too small on me, um, it was perfect for her. So I'm really happy about that. Um, then for my third project, that I'm gonna show you. Um, this project has been in hibernation for a long time. It is my cozy moment shawl. Um, the blue green version that I was knitting. Uh, this is Skippy's Whirl in the Kiwi Drizzle colorway and it's, it's just um, uh, greens and blues. Um, so I was I started with green, a lot of green, and then it uh, faded to blue, and now it's fading to green again, and then there will be some navy blue at the end. I'm not sure if I will get to that, um, but we will see. And this is a yarn hugger by Teen and Meep. Um, I think the label is too small to show you, but I'll try. Tin and Mip um, by Martina, who designs mostly bags, but also yarn huggers. Um, and yeah, it's just really great because um, if you're working from the inside of a yarn cake, it kind of starts collapsing, but this uh, keeps it together. So um, it's doing a good job. And I picked this up, so I, this was also one of the projects that I took with me um, <laughs> on our trip to the, to the beach, but um, I did not get to knit on this. Uh, I don't know if I picked it up that evening though when we were home, or maybe on the Saturday. And I placed a stitch marker here, and... I did this much up until now. So I am in lace section seven. So this is the Cozy Moment Shawl. It's my own pattern. Um, it was published last year uh, on Valentine's Day. And it, was it the previous podcast episode? I think so. I was showing you the uh, minis version of the Cozy Moment Shawl. Um, and color-wise, it looks very similar to this one. Um, yeah, so it has eight lace panels. I'm at the seventh one right now. And I, I can't wait to uh, block this because it will be 
so much prettier. Um, yeah, I need to do one more diamond here. And then I will be done with this lace section and then I will be moving on to the eighth lace section, which is clover lace. Um, so I'm knitting this right now. And then I will be doing this, which is like butterfly or clover lace. Um, the pattern is on my blog for free, but on my blog it's divided into um, into four parts because it was originally for a Scapius make-along and each week I would um, release a new part of the pattern. Uh, if you'd rather have the pattern in one go, then you can buy the PDF version in either of my pattern stores. So I have a pattern store on my website, which is newleafdesigns.nl or in my Ravelry store. It's just, um, it's, it's still manageable, but, um, you know, a shawl kind of looks like a blob at a certain point, and it's at the blob stage. Yeah. You know, I just have a little bit more to go, and then I can block it. I don't think I'll have it finished next week, but, um... Progress is progress, right? And I just uh, noticed that I forgot to mention what I'm wearing. Um, I finished this Spectre sweater two weeks ago and uh, you'll be able to, you know, I'm telling you all about it in episode 79, I think, two episodes ago. Um, it's the Spectre Sweater Pattern by Hohi Lucatelli, and I used Wool Metzfeve yarn from their advent calendar. I've used 22, yeah, I think I've used 22 colors of the advent calendar. Ta-da! <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my third work in progress. Um, and actually, this is not on the progress board yet, so I'm going to have to put that on. Hmm. I don't know how to judge this because I'm at lace pattern seven of eight, but the rows are longest now. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Let's say 80%. 75? Oh, I don't know somewhere in that area Ta -da! <laughs> and no i still have not cast on the handspun cardigan that i have frogged i just i don't know i think i have lost the drive but i will have to make it because i was using my handspun yarn that's now cut up into chunks and that is just um that i'm gonna be using for two rows, so I have to use it for this project. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows if I'll um, be knitting on that next week. Who knows, because um, I was already contemplating three new cast-ons this week. Um, yes, so <laughs> I'm forever looking to cast on more projects, so who knows? Before I forget, next week will be a live podcast episode again, which is March 4th. Um, yeah, so the first Thursday of the month, yes, March 4th, and it will be at 3 p.m. CET. Um, yeah, that's early morning America, midnight Australia. Um, yeah. And the last project that I am going to show you is the passion fruit socks that my boyfriend is making me. Um, Ta-da! Um, I think last time he was around here. So yeah, a good bit of progress. Um, his gauge has actually uh, loosened up. So we did some decreases. Oh, there they are. Okay. We did some decreases here because, um, yeah, 
Uh, usually for my socks I use 56 stitches or 60 stitches in the round and uh, he was using 64 because his gait was so tight. But yeah, I keep trying it on for him and uh, now we thought decreasing a little bit to 60 stitches would be best. So that's what we did. Yeah, so it's looking really, really good. And uh, someone mentioned that um, because I said that Tim kind of gets bored when he, um, he knows something, he's like, okay, achievement unlocked, done. Um, and someone mentioned that uh, it might be good to have a patterned sock. Um, but yeah, as we are halfway done with the foot, I'm not sure. I think maybe we could do something for the leg. Or I could have him do a gusset, because that's also, um, that would keep him busy as well. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure, because then the stripes would be narrower. With stripey socks, I usually just tend to go for a short row, um, a short row heel, uh, because I like the stripes to stay roughly the same. But, yeah. I hope to show you more progress soon. Um, he's um, knitting quite consistently every um, every other night or so. So um, yay! So yes, that's that was all that I had to show you knitting wise, um, or all that I can show you because I do have some other projects going on. Uh, so do I have any Netflix updates? Mm, I don't know. Oh no, I didn't watch a whole lot of uh, TV this week. Um, I've been <laughs> um, obsessed with Stardew Valley. Um, um, yeah, I think I watched one, another episode of um, Lupin, and then I rediscovered Stardew Valley and dove in the rabbit hole. So Stardew Valley is a game... Mm, it's a farming simulator game, but that sounds really boring. Um, but it is... I don't know how to explain it. Maybe like The Sims? It's not like The Sims. You don't build your own house. So you're a farmer and uh, basically you inherited your grandpa's farm and uh, you get to grow crops and have farm animals and you can also go fishing and go exploring the caves and... It's just a really, really cute game. And I've been watching this uh, Kickstarter game. So it's called Coral Island. It's being developed in uh, Indonesia by Stairway Games. And uh, so they are on Kickstarter. The, the game is coming out later this year um, on PC and then uh, next year for Switch. Um, so yeah, and it was also kind of this farming simulator game, but then also uh, tying it in with um, diving for coral, so you can preserve uh, or protect the coral reefs, and there is a mermaid kingdom, and yeah. So while I was getting excited for that game, um, even though I'll only be able to play it in a year from now. Uh, so I thought, okay, why not uh, try Stardew Valley again because there has been a new update and then, you know, there is a lot more content now. So yes, that's what I have been doing next to knitting. I haven't been watching that, um, that much on Netflix. So, but thank you for your recommendations. Uh, someone uh, recommended Versailles to me, but uh, it's not available on Dutch Netflix, so. I just, I just wish Netflix was, um, what's the word, um, I wish that what was available here, you know, would also be available in other countries and vice versa, because, you know, Dutch Netflix does not have Schitt's Creek, um, and now it does not have Versailles, and, you know, I bet a lot of other shows. <laughs> So I think I will be leaving you guys. Uh, just another reminder for if you know um, things that might be helpful for my Designing for Disabled People uh, resource, then um, please don't hesitate to uh, email me at hello at newleafdesigns.nl. Um, I'm just uh, trying to 
assemble or gather as many tips as possible um, so I can have a really um, comprehensive resource page thing. Um, I think that would be nice. Anyway, so just a little reminder for that. A reminder for the scrap along if you're entering it, please do join my Facebook group or um, you can uh, post your pictures on Instagram with hashtag new leaf scrap along. And yeah, I'll see you next week for the live podcast episode. I hope you are well and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.